Hi, hello, thanks for joining me. I thought I'd do a little mini series on pocket knives and smaller knives because everybody's into all these big bushcraft knives and that. So I thought for a change, let's do the smaller EDC type ones, a few vintage ones and that thrown in. And I'll do a little mini series, make a playlist out of it. The first one is a Visconti Canzo Italian World War II Navy knife, proper vintage. Now, I had one of these a few years ago and I either gave it to someone or I lost it, as you do. But then I found this one, but this one hasn't got the marking on the blade. So luckily with the last one I had, I did a bit of research on it and that's why I know what it is. You can easily be fooled into thinking it's an army clasp knife, but it's an Itali a World War II Italian sailor's uh, rigging knife, basically. And the thing that gives it away, obviously, is the marlin spike. So they can pry not so open. It's a little bit pitted this one. It's been stuck in the bottom of a Bergen. I only found it the other day when I was having a good clear out. I'm really pleased I found it. Yeah, and it's strong, it's strong as hell. Imagine this has been in a sailor's pocket in World War II and being used. It's a little pitted, not much, but it'll easy, easily, easily clean up. So you've got the marlin spike for the knots, obviously, because you imagine you saw it in rigging out in the cold and wet trying to do it in your fingers are numb so they used this spike to get in the knot and prise it open so you could get purchase on it yeah if that makes sense then you've got your little lanyard holder so you can put it around your neck or your pocket wherever you're going to keep it the blade it's not a bad little blade to be honest I'll give it a bit of a sharpen and that's going to come up really well I'm, I'm pretty sure it must be carbon steel it's got to be but that come up really good straight away with just a couple of little so and it's quite strong but like I said there's no markings normally the Visconti makers mark is around there or there and this one ain't got it and I'll come on to that in a, in a, in a while why it ain't got it on uh, and the thing I like about these as well the actual can opener is a beast it's a oh, it's a proper beast can opener. Look at that bad boy. I think I did a video on my old channel opening a can and whoosh straight through it, wallop. It makes a mess, but I tell you what, it rips through it. It's it's a beast. So I will use this once I've got it all cleaned up again. Cracking knife. Um, also, it's got a little flat screwdriver bit. Oh, there we go. There you go. And the scales are still quite good. Sometimes you can get where the, where the pins have gone through the scales. You find them splitting, but this one is intact. It's quite, it's in good nick. I remember it were covered in rust and I gave it a good oil, but it's still got a bit of pitting on and that. But I can, I can uh, improve on it. Lovely knife to have, a lovely collector's knife. And it'll still function as a knife, you know, to keep in your pocket as an EDC or whatever. It'll still function. Yeah, so the reason being it's not got the Visconti Maker's mark on it in World War II. I mean, you're not going to go up and slit somebody's throat with this, but <laughs> a lot of knife makers did not put the, the name the markers make on the knives when they were being used to be dropped off for the SOE, the Special Operations, uh, you know, the sneaky beakies behind foreign lines working in France and that. So if anybody were caught with a knife, they couldn't trace it back to the factory it had come from. <laughs> so like, there'd be all sorts of bits and pieces, but they wouldn't have any makers' names on it. makes sense, doesn't it? So, you know, it wouldn't lead back to the factory. And they didn't... I think the factory was between you have to quote me on this, I can't quite remember, between the border between Switzerland and Italy, the factory, the Visconti factory. And obviously they made quite a few other different knives as well. But that gives it a bit of intrigue, doesn't it? It could have been used by an SOE operative in World War II. <laughs> Special Operations Executive. Gives it a bit of a, you know, a bit of a history, doesn't it? But I love collecting old knives. And what I'll do, I've got quite a few pocket knives, I've got some quite new ones, some old ones, and I'll just do a bit of a waffle on them like this, just for your interest. 
But yeah, don't confuse this with an army clasp knife. Totally different. And like I said before, the thing that gives it away is the marlin spike for undoing knots. But a cracking knife, and once I've got it cleaned up, no doubt I will use this. So, I've got quite a few knives what we can look at at a later date. So, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, short video and look forward to the next one. Stay safe guys. All the breast. Cheers.